It is the form that most of you probably knew before you got into this class. Open up. What is it? It's y is equal to mx plus b. Mx plus b. In this equation, the letter M is the variable that we use algebraically to stand for slope. The B tells us when we graph this equation where the line crosses the Y axis, which is why we call this the Y intercept. Those two things are where this equation gets its name. It's called slope-intercept form because it has slope and the y-intercept. If we can identify the slope and the y-intercept, then we can graph equations when they're in this form. The first thing you do when you graph in this form is you use the y-intercept first. And this is telling us it's negative 3. That means on our graph, on the y-axis, at negative 3, there's a point. Its coordinates would be 0, comma, negative 3. The other thing we know is that the slope is 1 over 4. That means every point has a place where it rises up 1 and it runs over 4. So if I rise up 1 and run over 4, I get a second point. This is a pretty simple slope. It's not very steep. If you were walking this, you may not even feel like you're going up a hill. You can also find another point by dropping down and running to the left. That looks to me like it's gonna make a positive line. And when I look back at my equation, I see no negative in front of that, front of that one over four. So having a positive line there makes sense. I would usually use a straight edge on this, but I'm trying to go fast. And there is our line. When you have an equation in the form y equals mx plus b, you can find the, the line on the graph by using the, basically you're using the equation as a map. You're finding two points and then you can graph the line. The opposite of that is something like this problem that you guys had on your practice final yesterday. The equation asked, or the a direction said, what is the slope and what is the y-intercept? I looked here, there's the y-intercept. It's where it's crossing the line. That means in the equation that plus one-half or 0.5 is going to go at the end. And then I found that the rise was 1 and the run was 2. So this is my m. I think I did that okay, one. number 40 is taking this equation oh, yeah, and making the line. Yeah. Starting with negative 4, yep. we would make our first point there. The slope is negative 5 over 2, so I'm going to run up 2, and because it's negative, I want to turn left because that's going to make my line go negative. Yeah. See how you use those pieces? Yeah. Okay, and if you're still shaky on that, I have some practice activities for you to do. This will be part of the final, I guarantee it. Yeah. Does it matter like which way you go for the slope? Like, Because I always see you doing the run first and then the rise. Does that matter? Do, um, no, it doesn't. Okay, because I usually do the rise. I always think of rise over run as if you're in a building where you're using an elevator, you're going to go up or down first and then walk on the floor you're going to. Right? I kind of view it the same way on the graph. Go up or down, and then go across. Because the first number is on top. We tend to read things left to right in the United States, and from top to bottom. That's why I tend to graph the rise first, because it's on top. Okay. Does it really matter? No. It's my habit. If you form a different habit, as long as you're consistent, you're fine. Okay, okay. point slope form. This is not one we've learned. And it's one we'll use later. I just want you guys to have it in your notes because you can use this. If you have a point, an x, y pair, and you have the slope, you can also graph an equation. 
So if I have, this is what point slip form is. It's not my favorite. It's one I always have to look up because it's got these Y sub one things and Y sub twos are the, we don't like. What this is saying is if you have one point for a graph, let's say in this case it is negative one comma three. And I tell you that your slope is negative two. You could plug these pieces into this equation and find how to graph it. Well, really, you could just graph it with these things. But, eh. Well, I'll show you two ways. If I plug this three here, that's why this equation down here is written this way. Y minus the, the Y from your point, so Y minus this three, it's from here times the slope and then the on the other side slope is times that's why the negative two is here x minus this x and this x is a negative one and the equation has a negative so it gets rewritten as a positive yeah now honestly i would not write that equation because i don't like it it's not my favorite if I have the slope and I have a point, I can come down here and I can graph the point. Negative one, positive three. And if I know the slope is negative two, what's negative two over? One. One. So I'm going, my slope is going to be negative two over one. I'm gonna rise up two and run to the left one. Oh. Or I could drop down two and run over one. And I could graph it. But if you have the equation, you can turn it into y equals mx plus b. y minus three is equal to negative two x minus two, because what did I just do? Oh, uh, the claw. I did the claw, I distributed the negative two. I'm going to add this 3 to both sides, and I get y is equal to negative 2x plus 1. Did we cross at positive 1? Yeah. There's our b. That's our origin. Is this our slope? Yeah. Okay. Oh. And then finally, this is a review of, in, of standard form. We did this. Uh -huh. It is ax plus what? B equals Y. Not B equals Y. B, B Y, y equals C. <laughs> equals C. Sorry, no. The A and the B and the C are all integers. This term is the same as this written in a different form. Right? Mm -hmm. What I like about this one is if things work well, you can do the cover-up method. What's my y-intercept there? Negative four. But here's the problem. What's my x-intercept? Eight over three. What is eight over three? Uh, as soon as that cover-up method gives you fractions that are not like four or two, it makes it harder. So let's take this and convert it back to our favorite one, which is y equals mx plus b. I'm going to do minus 3x from both sides. And I get two, negative 2y is equal to negative 3x plus 8. I'm going to divide it right by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. Wait, which number? 8? Everything gets divided by the oh, negative 2. Maybe that's why I got my test wrong. <laughs> y is equal to 3 halves x minus 4. Well, that confirms what we knew. We already knew that this was negative 4 from our cover-up method. What we didn't know is what the y-intercept, or the x-intercept was, or slope. And now we have our slope. What's our slope? Right. So I can use this, and like I said, it's kind of like my elevator. I can go find a new. I can go find a new point. I'm going to ride the elevator up one, two, three points, yeah. and over two on the floor. If you like more than one dot, you can do it again. One, two, three, 
One, two. One, two, three. One. I don't like how bold the graph line is. Yeah, I don't either. That's why I'm making my points really big. When I'm done, you can get some markers if you want to go over it to make it darker. Okay, so with that, you can use all three of these equations, and because they're all in different forms, you can go back to the form that you like. Yes. I need to practice this. So I can, I can Standard form is awesome. Like I said, if I can use the cover-up method and it gives me nice, easy numbers to graph, but as soon as I got that fraction that I was like, uh, 8 divided by 3, I don't know what that is, but go ahead and just move things around and get them back into y equals mx plus b.